Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, day two officially of High Point Market. Hope you're having a great week so far. Uh, welcome to Universal Furniture. Welcome to the Learning Center. So in this space, we host a number of educational and informative events uh, or events that kind of cover a variety of topics. We do record all the events. So if you've missed anything, if you registered for something but you can't attend uh, or you just couldn't find a seat possibly, um, we do make those available about two weeks after market. So um, the same link that you went to register with us, uh, that's where we'll post them. We'll also put those out on email. Uh, they'll be on YouTube, social, et cetera. So you'll, you'll see them in about two weeks. Um, so look for that. Um, our space, if you've never been, is, is massive. It's about 115,000 square feet, three floors, tons of new things to see on floor three with our new modern collection. Uh, it's about 185 SKUs. You can actually pre-order all of that right now. So you can go check that out afterwards. On floor two, we have some great in-stock looks with some collections that have been in the line recently. Uh, and then on floor one, the ground floor that you're on here, uh, you have our special order upholstery offerings, as well as a new entry into that uh, with dining chairs. So there's a new dining chair special order program. Uh, there's also the designer's lounge, which has some fun swag. And um, there's actually a beauty bar. So if you need a hair touch up, um, I don't just roll out of bed looking this way. So um, <laughs> it's there to help you uh, if you uh, if you need to have fun there. There's also some champagne and some alcohol there. So if you need a little pick me up uh, or a coffee, depending on your choice, you, you have the option. So if you want to see anything, all we ask uh, after you leave here, uh, just check in at the front desk. They're just going to scan you in and then you can uh, have fun and experience everything. So we're so excited to have Sandra Funk back. Uh, Sandra, of course, is based in Nashville now, uh, originally in Jersey, is a uh, designer to the stars. Uh, and also, uh, I think, offers a unique perspective on your business, which is why you're all here. So uh, excited to have Sandra back once again, and I'll hand it over to Sandra. All right, you guys, that's officially the farthest I've walked in heels in two years. I might kick them off right here when it's over and walk barefoot to my sneakers in the back. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Neil and Universal, for always hosting the best stuff from education to the party. If you don't know about it, get on the list um, to incredible furnishings and always wonderful new um, new things coming. Right. Always, always growing, always learning. So definitely go check out um, just all the furnishings and all the beauty here at Universal when we're done. All right, I'm going to see if my clicker works. Work with me, people. Um, again, I'm Sandra Funk, and this is Designing for the Elite, prepping your business to serve high-end clients. So how many of you would like those big, beautiful, dream high-end clients? Yes? That's what we want, right? We want the, the bandwidth um, to be able to really do incredible work. So let's dig in. So again, thank you, Neil, Mary, and the entire Universal team. It is an absolute honor to be here, and I'm so thankful. So again, how would your business and life transform if your business was full of joy and profit? One thing I know for sure is that the profitable jobs are those larger jobs, right? The little work, still you have to still maintain the relationship. You have to still do all the administrative top line stuff, all the background stuff. So when we can, we want to try to be working on fewer, larger jobs and hopefully with appropriate budgets, hence the focus on the high-end clients. So profit and joy are attainable, both together, not one or the other, by pricing your project strategically, having refined systems, and creating an exceptional client experience. So we're really going to dig in on these details today, and that's what really draws high-end luxury clients to your firm, is when you are running it very, very professionally, you know exactly who your clients are. So how you run your firm now isn't how you'll run it for your next wave of clients. So we're going to dig in on some really fun details that might just shift some things for you. Also, I have an extra for you. It's a gift for today for being here in person. Um, it's my only work with dream clients call script. And you can snag this gift by sharing a photo of this presentation to your Instagram story and tagging me in it. So at House of Funk Design, and we will DM you the link. So you can take a picture at any point here, post it, tag us, and we will get you this fabulous call script. This is the call script that we use our team to make sure that every single potential client who reaches out gets vetted and lovingly cared for in a way that lets us know if they're a fit for us before I ever get involved in meeting that potential client. So it's super wonderful, valuable resource. 
and this is CU certified. So you'll get credit today if you are registered. Um, stay with me until the end for your IDCEC program code. All right. I just want to say hi to all the familiar faces I see out there. So good to see you all. OK, so I have a quick win before we dive into the details. Um, having a successful firm starts with signing the right clients. So I'm going to share my method to immediately increase your dream client closing rate. So we, we vet those potential clients. We get them in the door. We start meeting with them. How do we how do we increase our probability of actually closing them and having them become a client? That's what this is all about. So this starts with brainstorming. First, we're going to map out the phases of your process, right? This is what takes you from being a hobbyist and just kind of winging it to being a professional, having a system and a process. Then you're going to add the most important information from your design agreement. That's all the important clauses, the details, payment terms in a clear, concise, and beautiful way. And you're going to put it all together. And in this, as you're putting it together, you're going to outline your future client's experience. So you're going, to, you're going to tell it in a way that's from their perspective, how they're going to interact with your firm. This is what's going to happen next. And you're going to hear from me this often. And we're going to meet at that time, right? Really outlining what it's going to look like. And in this presentation, you're going to have an opportunity to set expectations about what it is that you're, what the experience of design is like with your firm and also set boundaries. So things like, I don't take text messages at 7 a.m. on Saturdays, right? That would be a good thing to know before we sign the client. And then um, all the expectations. Clients want to be good clients. They just don't know how. So we just need to tell them in a kind and gentle way. And then, of course, we're designers, so we're going to make it pretty, right? Create a slideshow that merges your killer portfolio, all those gorgeous images of your work, with exactly what it's like to work with your firm. And why does this work, right? This presentation. Showing your process instills trust. And once they're your client, they are a dream because they understand what you expect of them and what the boundaries are to being a good client. And they are visualizing their new reality the entire way through. So when we visualize our reality, when we visualize our future, it's much more likely to happen. Does anybody know law of attraction, right? Um, so when you are walking them through this this presentation, a simple slideshow, all the important points of your design agreement, your beautiful portfolio. When you walk them through this and you walk them through and then we're going to be at your home taking all the pictures and all the dimensions and then we're going to meet in my office and we're going to go through conceptual design, right? The step by steps. They are seeing themselves as your client. And so when you ask them at the end of this meeting to sign on, give their deposit and let's make it official, right? You're much more likely to get a yes out of them. It's all about positioning this presentation from their perspective. Make sense? Awesome. OK, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of background on me. Um, I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur, but I had no idea what I wanted to do. So I got a degree in finance. I figured at least I'll know what to do if I have all that money from being an entrepreneur. Ha ha. OK, so um, when I graduated, I still had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. So I went into business process consulting where I was traveling around and working with different businesses to help them become more profitable and more efficient. So I worked at Accenture, big five firm, and I helped Fortune 500 companies like Scythe Energies and GE Capital become more efficient and more profitable. So when I come and talk to you about business of interior design, it comes with that background, that business background, that finance background. That's kind of my perspective, just so you understand where I'm coming from. And when I was doing uh, business process consulting, it was the early 2000s, and uh, web design was all the rage, just to give you an idea of just how old I am. And um, web design courses weren't out yet. They weren't, there were not even college classes on how to design websites yet. So someone suggested to me to go to Parsons in New York City and study some of the design courses to apply them to the web. And of course, I was sitting in that basement at Parsons on that paint covered stool and I just fell head over heels in love with interior design. Left my big swinging job with Accenture and went and worked in the design industry. I worked retail, I worked in the trade showrooms and I worked for some incredible designers who really paved the way for me to start my own business, House of Funk in 2005. So I have a great team, studio, fabulous clients and started to really get some amazing press as well. And I couldn't do any of it without my incredible family. I met my husband at Michigan State in college. Um, he was there playing lacrosse. I was there hanging out. 
and getting that finance degree. And um, I have two beautiful teenage daughters. Yes, it's crazy. And a dog and a horse. Don't ask. And today you'll find me sharing all the lessons I've learned and how I grew my business at national design events just like this. And you'll find me empowering and educating design entrepreneurs with the Interior Design Standard. We are 800 members plus right now and 22 countries and counting. We are in every state in the United States except North Dakota. Does anyone know any designers in North Dakota? If you do, send them my way. Tell them I need one, just one. All right, um, this is us at a members only party at Eichholz last market and we're doing another one tomorrow. So if you're, if you're in, you're in and I'll see you tomorrow. As a business strategist, designers come to me when they've completed some amazing projects, when they've determined that they're meant to be a design entrepreneur. They're sure that they're in the right seat, right? They're supposed to be doing design and they're supposed to own their business. And when they realize that they'd like to take their career to the next level. Anybody here want to take it up a notch? Yeah, that's why we're here, to learn together. Awesome. So after my work with these designers, they're able to only work with dream clients, work on fewer, larger projects, confidently step into a career intentionally filled with balance, abundance, and joy. Balance, work-life balance, right? The ability to systematize and get your processes so clean that you actually get to sleep through the night. You actually get to go to the kids' games. You get a date night with your significant other, right? Um, abundance is obviously profit, more money, more money, more yay, and joy. Um, a big part of what I, my mission is to bring the joy that I set out to have in the beginning when I went into business for myself, to bring that back. Um, early in my career, I was running around fighting fires, doing all the crazy scramble, and the joy of being a designer gets lost in the shuffle sometimes, all swallowed up by the entrepreneurial stuff, right? So really want to get it systematized and organized and locked down so the joy can come on back in. So tell me if this sounds like you. We're going to do a little show of hands. You're ready to shift from taking on every project that comes your way to only working with ideal clients. The nice ones, the big ones, the budget ones, yeah? You're looking to switch from hustle, hustle, hustle to working smarter and making more money. Does that sound good? Yes? Awesome. You're ready to stop wondering if you're doing it right to having unwavering certainty. Do you guys sometimes question everything? I know for years and years and years in my business, every single thing I did, I was like, we could just tweak it a little. And then we tweak the next one a little. And then next thing I knew, I had nine projects all on completely different programs, a, a different design agreements, different ways. All that little tweaking will make you crazy. So you gotta remember who's on what program, right? If you guys are just coming in, there's seats, if you've got an empty seat next to you, put your hand up. Help, help a sister out. There we go. Thank you, guys. All right. You're ready to quiet the people pleaser within and hand a megaphone to your inner business badass. Like, who wants to own it? Who wants to own it? I love that. I like the badass thing. All right. I feel you. I was in that position with all of those things in my career, even though the finance degree, the business background, doesn't matter. I still was wiggling around and squiggling around in the beginning. So let's dig into those really clear steps on how to really work with elite clients. So these are my overall six steps to abundance, balance, and joy. This is what I go over in depth, deep, 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 and wide, wide, wide inside the standard program. Today, we're going to cover three of these steps in as much depth as I can give you with the time that I've got, and then I'll be here for questions after, okay? So these are master the tech to catapult ahead. Confidently price your services for high-end clients. That's one we're going to handle today. Attract and land ideal clients. Scale with streamlined processes. Improve your buying power and trade relationships. Develop your dream team. And there's a bonus that goes across all of the modules that I do, which is delight clients with an exceptional client experience. That is so incredibly important when we are trying to work with high-end luxury clients and get repeat business and referrals. And I'm going to dig in on that one pretty good for you today. So this is baby Sandra. Hi, baby Sandra. Um, I hated talking about the numbers. I wasn't confident in my pricing. Again, have that finance degree. Still wasn't confident about it. I found myself negotiating and second guessing literally everything that I did. My clients found my pricing vague, which was like not okay, right? Um, and I was working my booty off and I didn't have much to show for it. Any of you have like a whole lot of money coming in? 
and a whole lot of money going out. And at the end of the day, you're sitting there going, how did, how is there only $30,000 left for me? Right? I was there. I was there. Okay. Then I had a high end, incredible dream client come back to me for a second project. But in that kickoff meeting said to me, I don't want to be nickeled and dimed like a knife to the heart, you guys, right? Thankfully, they were still coming back for project number two, but I was getting some real information about what this really high-end dream client thought about my pricing structure. So they felt that those, you know, I think it was every two weeks at that time or maybe once a month. I can't remember what phase of life I was in. I've tried every pricing model known to man. Um, But I was sending invoices about every two weeks. And also I was sending all the freight bills at the end of the project. And this client, was super high end, five houses, traveling the world, adult children grown, you know, they're all over the place. And they felt that all that invoicing was nickel and diming them. And he said to me, I just want to know what it's going to cost me, how long it's going to take. I'll send you a check. I'll give you the keys to my Manhattan Pied-a-Terre and you go. Right? We had trust already. We had done a project together and I couldn't do it. I could not figure out what design fee I should charge this person. I could not figure out what the budget should be for this Manhattan pied a I was literally, I could see so clearly that if I wanted to play in this arena and start working with his friends and his circle in his world, that I was going to have to figure this out and get it together. So then I learned you can price your projects so that you are abundant and beloved by your clients. So this is my step one. This is what we're going to dig in today, confidently pricing your services for high-end clients. So how do we do this? We use past project data to project the design fee and the budget needed for your current project. So if you're not doing it already, start collecting your data today. You want to make sure that you're collecting the total square footage, the total spent on des- on furnishings from the very beginning to the very last pillow you know, flowers at the photography. And you want to track all of the time that you spent on that project. All right. Don't worry about the design fee number. You really want the hours that you spent on it. You can take this data and look at it in a way that you kind of categorize it out by build, renovate, renovation, design only, furnishings, you know, all the things like the different categories of design that you offer. And you can start to see commonalities coming out in those numbers. And you can use those numbers to project your fees and budgets going forward. All right. If this makes sense to you, head nod. If this still sounds like that you're not going to go home and just whip this spreadsheet together. No? Yes? All right. If this is like going over your head, this is exactly what I walk through step by step by step inside the standard. We've created a flat fee calculator. It's literally plugging your numbers in and out pops the fees. But again, you can do this. It is very possible, but it's just about starting to collect that data now. So when you do this, you're able to provide the full project estimate up front, right? All of a sudden, I'm making those clients happy. What is the first question that every potential client asks you? How much is it going to cost? That is right. And when you can answer that confidently and with absolute certainty, your expertise level, your, uh, your little meter on the I'm interviewing a few designers just went up a lot, right? When you want to work with high-end luxury clients, they need to know the full budget. We're not talking a $10,000 little spruce up with some pillows and lampshades. We're talking hundreds of thousands to the multi-million dollar projects, they cannot go into these projects with like a wing and a prayer hoping that the budget is going to turn out what they're hoping for, right? They have to know. People are going to be moving money around. There might be, they might be taking out a loan because they're building from scratch. This is where we really have to show up as experts and professionals, and we need to be able to price our projects ahead of getting into the project. Okay. And that's what it's all about. It's about being able to come up with these numbers before you design anything. So you're going to provide the design fee, the furnishings budget, the build renovation ballpark estimate. And I'm going to walk you through inside the standard. I walk you through step-by-step how to make sure you get those numbers from your trades and tax and freight. We're even going to track track freight and we're going to move freight to the purchasing. We're going to take hundred percent on purchasing with freight. 
do not leave those freight bills for the end. At the end, we want to be taking a victory lap, taking gorgeous photos and asking for a testimonial. We do not want to be, what is it, nickel and diming? Nickel and diming them. Those freight bills roll in one at a time over months, right? I remember I would get a freight bill and it would be like three months after the project is wrapped. And I'm like, what are you? This freight company is billing slow. And so now I'm billing slow, right? I took back control. Now I know my freight numbers. I know the percentage that it's going to fall into every single time. And I collect it at the front and let those freight bills come when they come. I don't care. I've already been paid for it. So when you price in every little detail and you do flat fee price, pl flat fee pricing, say it with me five times fast. It's like flying first class, okay? I'm going to give you the analogy first and then we'll talk about how it applies to us. So when you're flying first class, you've made the decision. You know that that flight costs you four times what the people in the back of the bus are paying, right? But you decided this is our anniversary trip. This is our honeymoon, whatever. This is how I roll. Cool. Um, and you've given yourself this big upgrade, right? So again, you know that you're going to go from point A to point B. But the experience of getting there is going to be more enjoyable. I always say to my husband, but it'll be like vacation starts when we get to the airport. Can't we please? And I just book it anyway. But you know you're like in the lounge, right? And they're like, uh, your flight is boarding, Miss, Miss Funk. And I'm like, oh, thank you. I'm just going to finish up my free cocktail while I get ready to go to my flight. And you cruise in to the airport area where everyone's standing there looking haggard and tired and just hoping for a peanut. And you're like, no, it's cool. I was at the bar with all the cheese and the wine. And you stroll on up because you're boarding first, right? And you're getting all cozy in your big ass chair. You're playing with your blankie and your little hand lotion and maybe an eye mask if they gave you one. And um, everyone is rolling on by you. And, you know, you're trying not to make eye contact. You don't want to make the poor people in the back feel bad. So shit is bougie, right? By the way, just like a marketing aside, they could put that, that door on the plane anywhere they wanted. They put it in the front so that they have to walk past first. It's called advertising, right? So anyway, so you're all there in your cozy seat. They're coming around with warm towels. And next thing you know, there's a silver tray and champagne. And you're like, bottomless champagne for me. Vacation has begun, right? So excited. You guys, there's no way you could drink enough champagne for it to cost four times what the ticket in the back costs. There's no way that that little blankie that you're giving back, right, is worth that. It's your choice. You decided to have an elevated luxury experience. And then all these little perks feel like freebies. They feel like extras. You freaking paid for every single bit of it 10, 10 times over, right? You made a choice. You're going to go from point A to point B. And how are you going to get there? You're going to get there in a small ball in the back of the plane. Are you going to get there with all the excitement and all the drama of having like real cutlery and champagne? Yeah. So take this to your client's experience. You can go from not done project to completed project. How are you going to get there? Are you going to get there with them calling you to follow up on status, wondering when you're going to meet next, hoping that this budget works out, can't understand when the timeline is, like hunting you down, looking for answers, right? Or are you going to take them on an incredible client experience journey. Are you going to have built into your flat fee money to have their favorite coffee at every presentation, right? Ask them at their intake, what's your favorite coffee drink? I'm going to have that there for you. Do you mean the evenings? What's the cocktail of your choice? Did they have a big life event? You are going to build in budget to send flowers. Are they gutting their kitchen? Build in budget to send them out to a beautiful restaurant the first night of the gut, right? When it's kind of heart-wrenching that they have their house all ripped to shreds. Build in being the designer that you wish to become. Build it into that flat fee and then dazzle them. Does that make sense? Is anybody flying home first? It's too short of a flight. All right. So now let's talk about payment timelines a little bit. Just the nitty gritty, you guys. Uh, collect 50% of your design fee when you sign the client on right? We're getting into bed together. They're going into your pipeline. You're putting your resources toward their project. They have them put their money where their mouth is. And in my opinion, you should collect the other 50% before you have any meetings where you give your brilliance, your design to that client. You guys, our design is our intellectual property. Once we give it, we can never take it back. 
You know, you can be you can fiddle around with accounts receivable until the cows come home. But once you told them, take out that wall, paint that wall this color, here's how this layout's going to look, you can never get that back. I think we underestimate how unique we are as entrepreneurs. We could go to school for design. We could go to school for business. We could go to school and become a lawyer, right? But you can't pull off being a design entrepreneur with any longevity unless you also have innate talent. You have an eye. Your design wisdom, brilliance, eye, style, call it whatever you want, is completely and incredibly invaluable to your clients. That is why they are calling you. Anybody could fill a house full of furniture. Anybody could make it functional, right? Might not be the best function, but they can get their home done without you. You are inherently a luxury and they are coming to you for your innate wisdom and your innate talent. So just don't forget that that is a really big part of what you're giving to them and that you should be paid prior to handing that over. In my opinion, you do you. Okay, in addition, collect 100% upfront for furnishings, including freight and tax like we talked about. So my old way of business, do the work, do the work, do the work, send an invoice. Do the work, do the, do the work, do the work, send an invoice, right? That is me funding their project. I've got overhead, I've got employees, I've got my time, and then I'm sending an invoice and then I'm farting around with accounts receivable, right? Chasing down the money. My clients, the good ones, the dream ones, are traveling the world, working hard, starting foundations, running television shows. I don't know. They are not sitting around opening their mail and paying their invoices in a timely manner. They just aren't, right? They're busy people. So think about instead, pay, do the work, right? They pay you, you do the design work. They pay you again, you present it. They pay you, you order the furnishings, right? We do not need to be the bank of funk. We need to be the house of funk, right? We do not need to be the ones who are funding our very wealthy clients' projects. So turn that around in your head. All right, so we have an example of how this works in action. Cheryl went from negotiable to the boundaries queen. So Cheryl was in yes mode with her clients. She was just really being accommodating to every request and she was stressed, overwhelmed, and not nearly as profitable as she desired. So Cheryl had the design skills down. What she needed was help elevating the business structure to the same level. So I talk about this all the time. Design skills here, business skills here. We want design skills and business skills on the same level. That is when it takes off, right? That is when the mastery of business and design are equal and things can really come together. So after our work together, Cheryl tackled the next referral that came her way in a completely different way. She used the potential client presentation that I talked to you guys about in the quick win earlier and um, did the whole kind of standard process with this project as well. So Cheryl emailed me after the presentation and said, and the client said, this sounds great. No joke, this sounds great. They weren't worried about that big number. I hear from clients or from designers all the time. Um, oh, but an hourly number is a lot easier to slide by than a big flat fee. Well, you know what? We don't want to slide it by. We want to talk about it head on. Can you afford me? Do you value my services to this level or not? We want to have that conversation before we get into a big project with people, right? So she was blown away. Contracts were executed. The first half of the design fee was paid and the team was off and running. But the week the Silicon Valley bank collapsed, Cheryl found out that that's where her clients had her, their money all tied up. And Cheryl said, all I could do was say a prayer of gratitude. If this were a year ago, I would be losing my mind, wondering if I would be paid for the work my team and I had done. A year before we worked together, she was doing the work, sending in the invoice, doing the work, sending the invoice. Now she's doing it the standard way, getting paid and then doing the work. So her client's money was all tied up in the bank crash and she didn't have a care in the world. She was all paid up. Cheryl took her firm to the next level with a pricing model that offers her abundance, protects her financially, and her clients love. I have had this happen. I have had, again, back in the day when I was doing all the work and then sending the invoice, I had an extremely high-end client's child get sick, and they just disappeared. They went to where the child was at school, and they stayed there for months and months and months until things were better. I didn't hear a peep. I had no idea what to do 
right? They owed me a ton of money. I had their house, you know, I had trades and vendors going. And I think back to that day and I'm like, if well, if I was doing it this way, I would just calmly pause the project knowing I was paid in full and just wait until I heard back from this client. I mean, I understand when they got back exactly why they did what they did. I would do the same thing. I would drop everything and not worry about some little designer invoice. But man, oh man, if you have a pricing model that protects you, you can actually kind of sleep through the night a little better. So once you implement this strategy, your ideal clients will be signing on and raving because all they want that first question is, what's this going to cost me, right? You'll be making great money while having your clients' relationships, like excellent client relationships. One of my favorite things about this whole way of doing it is that you're essentially having the finance, the numbers conversation one time at the beginning of the relationship. The rest of the relationship there's no invoices. There's no time bills. There's no stress about every time you send out a whole wad of invoices, hearing back from everybody. How could it have possibly taken you that long to find a sofa? Well, I'll tell you what. I had a million square feet of showroom I had to walk around. <laughs> no, but seriously, I'm going to put you down for a second. I need water. <laughs> We're back. Right, right. Okay, let's do that. Who charges first and does work after? Nice, 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 nice. Who does the work and then invoices? All right, I feel you, I feel you. Who's changing their ways? Yeah, see, it's just a little mindset shift. That's all it takes. And the clients don't care. They, they don't know, they don't know the, how to do it or what to do. And if you tell them completely clearly, transparency from the very beginning, they either say, yes, that works for me or no, it does not, right? It's about having those conversations early in the uh, potential client process. And we'll talk about that more. I needed that water. Okay, so there we are. Um, go into every pitch with 100% immovable confidence. So what if you had that flat fee calculator? You were working off of past data and that you knew that the flat fee that just spat out of that calculator was accurate. You knew that you could be profitable, that you could be... Um, you could be someone who can do the surprise and delight because you've built it in, right? That is what we're talking about. Getting to the level where you have your pricing so strong that you can put it out there and walk away. If it's too much for what they want, that's fine. We can cut scope. That's the only way that fee's going down, right? Cut that scope or maybe you're not the right fit for them, but wouldn't you rather know that first before you've got their house all gutted? I've had it the other way a couple times and it is not pretty. You don't want them run out of money while their kitchen's got it. Okay, so we're on to the next, you guys. Ready? Early in my career, I thought every project was too different to systematize. I was always totally overwhelmed. Every single project that came in was like a brand new baby that needed to be handled in a completely unique way. Not true. I did not have the capacity to do all the things. I couldn't do the marketing and the networking and the insurance and all the CEO stuff and the design and the project management and the relationship management. I just couldn't get it all done. And I could not even find time to hire. I was just in blindly overwhelmed state. And then I learned that you can be a profitable interior designer without feeling exhausted, burning the midnight oil, or missing the kids' games. How many of you could use a little less exhaustion and a little bit more time on your hands? Yeah, it's a detailed, busy delightful career, but it will, it'll run you into the 80 hours a week thing if you're not careful, right? Okay, so that's, we're on to step two today, which is scale with streamlined processes. So how do we do this, right? It's, it's a big one, but it needs to be done. You need to document all of your processes, right? You need to write it down. If you do it more than twice, you do it every project, you need to start to document those processes. Then you refine them, you revise them, you rearrange them. You remove duplication of efforts and you make sure that you have the right team members doing the right task at the right time. Here's how you can start this, okay? First, define the phases of your process. For instance, mine are the potential client process, onboarding, conceptual design, detail design, purchasing, and then execution. Within each of those big buckets are a million little tasks and details. So you're going to template also, template all client, vendor, and trade-facing communication. This really comes in handy when you're a one-human show 
and you just are going to write that same following up on an open order email for the 97,000th time, you may as well have a template ready to roll. And certainly when you start to grow and scale, this is an incredible resource to have built for yourself because your team can then use one voice, right? You can make sure that there's this A top A plus level communication going on with vendors, trades, and clients. If you have it pre-written, you don't have have everything come back through you before it goes out to the to the universe, all the people. Anybody. All right, let's talk about this one in action. So Melinda went from sacrifice to stand in your space. Melinda had a pipeline full of high-end clients, but her process lacked consistency. consistency. It was different for every single project. So she was really out there saying yes to any person's whim or request. And a lot of them were coming down to timing. Everybody wants their project right now, right? So she was trying to do everything in absolute fast wind. And she was literally pulling all-nighters with two young children at home and working pretty hard on burning herself out. Have you guys all, has any of you been up late at night getting some crazy deadline that you can't understand why this deadline exists? Yes. So she sacrificed herself and everyone around her. And all this people pleasing really left her overworked and underpaid. She wasn't charging enough money for all of this crazy around the clock work either. Melinda was ready to run her projects differently using a proven efficient system. After working together, she stopped letting her clients steamroll her, her word, and started running her business like the expert that she is. And again, I would, I would like to say, I don't think our clients mean to steamroll us. I think when they aren't given clear and concise direction, expectations and boundaries, they're thinking, cool, maybe I'll just throw out an idea, right? Um, it's like, it's like going into your dentist and saying, I need that root canal. I'd like it to cost $25 and take 20 minutes. And I don't want to feel any pain, right? That is what, if we don't say anything otherwise, if we don't give some expectations and, and, and lead our clients and they're just left with, yeah, yeah, we'll do a root canal. It's going to be beautiful, right? Then they're like, okay, but I'd like it to be done by Tuesday. And I like, right, they start giving you the things. If we say, oh my gosh, yeah, we can do the root canal. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to cost $5,000. We're going to do it in three weeks from now and it's going to be three hours. And do you want the laughing gas? Or how far do we need to take this, right? Then they know. I think a lot of what I did early in my career was, uh, yes, it's going to be beautiful. Yes, it's going to be amazing. And I didn't finish the damn sentence. I didn't give them enough, right? Now, I set the budgets. I set the design fees. And I set the timelines. I let them know when I'll be having my first meeting, my second meeting, when we'll be going into purchasing, all of that, right? All of that is set up and communicated. It changes the game. So Melinda said, the systems that I have in place now save me time, keep me profitable, make clients happy, and give me design freedom. When we give ourselves the proper design fees, the proper budget, and the proper amount of time to really do our innate art, our talent, our passion, our designs get better, right? We can actually design to the fullest of our abilities, and it's our choice. When I hear designers saying, I, did, I just don't have enough time, they don't have enough budget, they want it too quick, da 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 it's like, but you said yes to that craziness. If we stand in our power and say, I can't do anything miraculous with your home in four months. I can do a miraculous design in four months and get it in action, right? But it's for us to stand back and say, no, no, I am the expert. I am the one who does this day in and day out, and I am going to lead you. I am going to teach you. I am going to be the one who, who sets up the parameters of how this is going to go down. And when you do that, all the way back in the potential client process, before they are your client, they they say yes or no. If that timeline, that budget, that program, that way doesn't work for them, they're out. And what happens is you are only working with dream clients because you are setting your own boundaries. Does that make sense? So Melinda went from the verge of burnout to having a thriving business, one with great profits, realistic timelines, and systems that allow her to have a life. Once you implement this strategy, you'll be out of overwhelm. You'll be able to scale your business with all those templates and processes in place, and you'll be more efficient. We all know efficient equals profitability, right? 
So early in my career, um, we're on to the next one, by the way. I wasn't ready for my ideal clients. I was not getting consistent referrals. Can you imagine that? The guy who thought I was nickel and diming him going and telling all of his friends, hey, go get nickel and dime by her. I don't think so. Um, and I wasn't preparing my clients for success with my firm. That goes right back into what I was just talking about, right? Setting those expectations, boundaries, being the leader. We hire a lawyer. We hire a doctor. We hire... Um, an accountant, and we want them to lead us through the process of working with them. We are not the expert. We don't know what happens next. They do. They want the same from us. And I argue that we are even more special than a lawyer or a doctor. Maybe doctors, maybe they have some innate ability to look at blood. But um, we have something extra beyond what is learnable in school, right? We have that innate design ability. We have that style. So value that. Take it seriously, y'all. Oh, my Nashville just came out. Okay. Then... Mm -hmm. um, I learned that you can be completely irresistible to your dream clients. So how many of you would have a better business if you had a never ending list of dream clients just waiting to work with you? Would it be better? Would you cut some of those regularly was loose? Would you say bye bye to some of those? Uh, I need it now. Tiny budget people, by the way, the smaller the project, the tinier the budget, the more difficult the person. Is that not right? Or maybe we just don't appreciate them as much. <laughs> okay, I digress. Step three. All right, now we're into my favorite part. Um, bonus, across. this runs across all of the modules in my program and in across my entire firm. It's really delighting clients with an exceptional experience. This is the part that takes you from you had a house that needed furnishings to a completed beautiful house. You either are sending them on an elevated, incredible journey that is memorable and delightful, or you're just getting them from point A to point B and it's probably not going to be cocktail party worthy, right? We want you to have, have them have such a magical experience that they cannot help tell their friends and come back to you. Um, I had a really high-end client move across the street and just, you know, they finished their 6,500 square foot house and they moved across the street to the 8,000 square foot house. And I was like, honey, we are in business. Let's go. That's what you want. Clients that are like, we love renovating houses. We just love the process. Yay. Have those clients just moving across the street to just keep my career moving. Yay. So how do we do this? Provide clear and consistent communication. This is the baseline that we talked about. This is them chasing you for status and updates, right? I had an incredible mentor who said to me once, if you, if you are ever called by a client to ask for an update, when's the next meeting? When am I going to hear from you again? What's the status on the thing, right? You have failed. We need to get ahead of it. We need to be communicating with them so clearly and consistently that they would never even consider nagging you on Saturday morning at 7 a.m. via text. Yes, I've been there. Okay, so what do I do with that? Every single Friday from the day they sign their agreement to the day we photograph the job and give the final gift, I send them an email. It's our little status update every single Friday. You pick a day that works for you. And I give them a little summary of what happened this week, what's happening next week, where we are with the big picture vision, what's the next time you're going to see me, hear from me, my team, et cetera, all the things. In that, I also remind them of the big things that are coming up. Hey, we have our conceptual design meeting coming up. Just a reminder, all decision makers must be present or we will reschedule. Design fee needs to be paid in full prior to that meeting or we will reschedule. And you have one round of revisions prior to that meeting within one week, communicated in one way at one time, right? Don't text me, send me a telepathic message, an email, and three goats with a sign tape to their back. You guys have that client, right? Yes. Okay, for me, one round of revision within one week communicated at one time, or there's an additional fee. That fee is big because it is basically a deterrent, right? We want consistent, concise decision makers. And they are created, not born, right? There, it's possible for your most indecisive client to make a decision if there's a three to $5,000 fee for changes coming if they don't. You only have to send that, uh, that proposal for change fees out one time if you get that fee high enough. It needs to be big. We send it out for a couple hundred bucks and they're like, cool, no problem. A couple thousand bucks? Oh, I think we're going to sit with this tonight and really get, get together and really make those decisions. I thought you might. Okay. Okay. I get so excited about that one. Um, so implement processes and systems that take your client's feelings into consideration. So again, the entire thing, the 
whole way that I run my business is taken from the position of how is this going to land for my client? What is this email going to feel like when they receive it? What is this, when they walk into my office, how are they going to feel? Are they going to feel welcome? Are they going to feel nervous? Are they going to feel cared for? Do we look excited to see them? Everything we do, how is this going to land for my client, right? The fact that I get all my invoicing done early in the project is all around how is this going to feel for them? Let me walk you through it. This is the emotional timeline of a design project. If you have a phone that has a camera on it, take a picture of it now. All right, this is a fun one. This is my favorite slide. I do this in my potential client process and I walk them through this step by step and then I remind them of this later, okay? It starts with a potential client with a need, right? They come to you because their house isn't perfect. There's something that could be better or they're gonna build from scratch or they're gonna renovate or they're gonna add on, right? Whatever it is. So a person with a need finds a guide. This is like the hero's journey. You guys know that one? We are the guide. We are the trusted advisor. We are the brilliant expert who's going to change their lives. They have a problem. We're going to solve it, right? They have a problem. We're going to solve it. They're excited. They're happy. Take their money then. Don't take their money later. Take their money when they're happy, excited, happy. Up. Okay. Then you tell them that it's going to take a few months before you're going to see me at the conceptual design meeting because I am going to give myself the budget, the time, the appropriate amount of things that I need to do great design. So you're going to let them know that. They're going to be like waiting, 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 right? But you're not going to ghost them. You're going to send that email every single Friday. We're still on track. Everything's coming along beautiful. Can't wait to see you. You know, blah, blah, blah. I even set all these dates for the meetings at the very beginning because I know I can meet the deadlines because I set them. That's how sure I am, right? The, the first intake meeting, the conceptual design meeting, and the detailed design meeting are scheduled when we start the project. Do you know how good that is for my pipeline? Do you know how much my accountant loves knowing when the money's coming in? The budget's also set. So I know I'm getting 50% of a design fee, 50% more at conceptual design when they're excited because they're seeing beautiful things. I'm getting 100% of the budget we already set together at detailed design. And I know what that budget is. I can pipeline cash flow. I can pipeline teamwork. I can pipeline a vacation. You see where I'm going with this with the joy and the balance? Okay. So Again, their, their emotional roller coaster is going like this because they're so excited and then they're waiting. They're so excited they're waiting. Then it's detailed design. We give them all the proposals, right? All It's time to purchase all those gorgeous furnishings with freight and tax 100% up front. And here's where it all falls apart, you guys. We take all their money, trash their house, and make them wait. <laughs> that is not a good time to send an invoice. Capiche? So this is when I used to send all those weekly invoices. And they're like, what are you still doing? The design is done. The furniture is purchased. Why am I still getting invoices? They can't conceptualize how much work it is to run around, herd the cats that are furniture vendors to get everything into the warehouse, right? But the herding of cats is uh, procurement. And it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of effort and there's a lot of moving parts in that. And it's really hard to send great, big, beautiful invoices for something when they're like, what are you doing? We're following up on open orders. How could that possibly take you this much time, right? Forget it. Put all that into the flat fee in the beginning when they're super excited and never talk about money again. Yay. Okay. Especially not when they're down here with their house trashed and all their money gone. Don't do it. Okay, so then we're, you know, we're getting to the end and the installation is coming and that, you know, the project is coming together. It's starting to look like something. The universal furniture is already at the warehouse and it's going to get delivered. It's going to be so exciting, right? And then there's a punch list. I actually had a client say to me one time, I think we're cursed. And I was like, <laughs> how many of you out here have had a project that didn't have a punch list? Anyone? Anyone? No. I was hoping to meet a unicorn today, but it's not going to happen. Um, every project has a punch list, and it's only curse worthy if you never told the client that that's a natural part of the flow, right? When we tell them that, and we do it in a fun way, maybe with a graphic and a little story, they remember that this is the natural flow and that I, too, will have a final product, right? I, too, will have that beautiful, photo-worthy home that is what our portfolio is full of, and it just, we will see it through and it will happen, right? So all of this is about setting expectations early. All right, I need water. How are you guys feeling? Does anybody think that they'll put a slide like this into their potential client process? Yeah? Okay, good. I like it. Um, I think somewhere in my 
world. I have a video of me um, doing my whole potential client process and this slide. Um, you can reach out to me if you want to see that video. It's You can reach out to me via email or DM or just come up here and hand me your card and I'll send it to you. Okay. Surprise and delight. We're digging more into this, right? We're planning surprise. We're planning for surprise and delight from a budget standpoint. We're building it into our flat fee at the beginning of the project so that we can pay attention and snap in and be like the surprise and delight whenever it's time. So putting yourself into your client's shoes to ensure that they're having a five-star experience. And I'm going to tell you a little story about purple flowers. They were cooler than these. These are pretty, but they were, they were edgier. Um, so I was finishing up a potential client meeting and this cute little toddlery, uh, delightful, dressed up like a um, princess in purple comes splitting into the room, like doing twirls. And I was like, oh my gosh, you're so cute. What's your name? What's with this beautiful dress? And she was like, I'm so-and-so and I'm turning five tomorrow and we're having a big party and it's a purple princess party and da 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 da, da right? Telling me her little stories. And I was like, noted. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm out. Like, I hope, hope we get the job. Like, talk to you soon. We're, I do a thing where I meet at their house and they come back to my um, studio for the proposal. So I'm like, I'll see you in two days for the proposal. Great, great. So I get in the car and I'm on the phone with my best floral, florist. Uh, I'm in the car talking to my florist and I'm like, listen, I need really beautiful purple flowers to deliver, delivered at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. And I want them to make sure that they're like cool and mid-century kind of very spare, very elegant, whatever. Um, and this is me showing off my design brilliance, the aesthetics of the family, what they're looking for, coupled with the purple party that's coming up tomorrow. I want to send a message that I see you. I can take in your aesthetic, your desires, and I can translate that into a beautiful home or even a beautiful floral arrangement, right? That's the surprise and delight that you want to build in. The ability to hear something and act on it and have the budget set aside to do so. Um, they got the flowers. They had the party. We got the job. You guys can see how this was going, right? Awesome. Okay, so once you implement this strategy, you'll figure out exactly what your client wants so you can meet and exceed their needs and expectations and everything. You'll be prepared for your ideal client. So how many of you feel like if your dream client showed up tomorrow, your firm is ready? Your communication is top notch. Your systems are ready. You've got that client experience locked down, right? That is exactly what happened to me with the nickel and dime guy. I was like, I'm not, it came too soon. I say that to my husband sometimes too. Not that part. That, <laughs> I did not mean to do that. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> oh my, I actually have a real story. <laughs> oh, that was terrible. Don't tell my husband. Um, no, we met in co we met in college. Oh my god, <laughs> we met in college, and um, I had been in this long term relationship that I broke off, and he was a very dear friend of mine, and he gave me this like really cute hug and was like, "I'm here for you if you need me," and I was like, "Oh, I got that, okay," and I was like, "No, I need time. I'm not ready. I'm not ready yet." Like, did, wasn't that what I was supposed to say? <sighs> Say that to my, well, you showed up before I was ready, Jay. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> I may never stop sweating. <sighs> I'm going to drink more water. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. I hope Neil can edit that video. <sighs> okay. I don't know. Your clients are going to like it. Let's go. Um, <laughs> So what I wanted to say to you all is that you can do this, right? Um, I hear from designers all the time. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but and you can you can implement a wildly profitable pricing model that works for you and that your clients really love and they value and they appreciate, right? You can use systems that give you back your time. You can enjoy your business again. I cannot believe I said that. <laughs> You can be completely irresistible to your ideal clients. So I help designers transform their businesses like this every day. And um, I just want you to know that it is possible for you to do in your business as well. Okay, so are you ready to step into your new reality? Um, you have two options. You can hire the experts, figure out the formulas, 
document, review, refine, and revise those systems until smooth and work. You know, we've given you the what you need to do to make it happen. You can absolutely do that. Or number two, you can transform your business by implementing that proven method that we have templated, worked out the kinks, tried on our own, worked with hundreds and hundreds of designers as well, and just drop that right into your firm. So you can do it on your own, like I said, or you can come with me. This is your invitation to join me on the fast track inside the interior design standard. And I want to tell you a little bit about why I created the standard. Why did I take a minute and um, focus on helping our industry and helping other designers? Um, this is why. So I was busy, busy, busy. My business was growing, had the team, the studio, the great projects, great press, everything was rocking. And then I hit my business rock bottom. I had three beautiful, high-end, fabulous, big projects fall apart one after another after another. Um, and I was on my way back from speaking at a design conference with my dear friend, Luann Nigera, and she's done my window treatments for over a decade now, and we were traveling together, and she said, I got off the phone with that last client, that third client that fired me, and she said, what's going on? And I was like, it is... Um, devastated, right? Just devastated. Like, what is, go what is going on? Like, I just can't seem to work this out. And Luann asks me, what's the common denominator? And I'm like, I'm the common denominator, right? Like a good Taylor Swift song, I will not sing for you. Uh, we've had enough fun here today. Um, okay, so then I realized that I'd clawed my way to my ideal clients, but my business was not ready. Okay, what worked with the smaller projects did not fly with these great, big, beautiful projects, right? That's the question I asked you earlier. Would you be ready if the dream client came today? Because I was not. I did not have clear pricing. I did not have clear systems. I did not have good communication. I was taking the great, big, beautiful project and being like, it's going to be great. It's going to be so fun. And then silence, right? I gave them nothing to go on. They had to give me so much trust. And it was too much to ask of anyone. Plus, I was letting my clients determine the timelines and the budget. It's not me, right? I'm the expert. I'm the one who does design day in and day out. They were coming into my sandbox and telling me how to play. Again, not their fault. Given no boundaries, expectations, clarity, leadership, they were just winging it, right? So I considered throwing the towel, which was really not an option for me. I'm a third generation female entrepreneur in my family and it was not going to be me who was going to be the failure. So my quest began. I pulled over for a few months. My team was still working away on the projects we did have still. I had to um, let go of an employee. I had three huge projects in my pipeline go vamanus very quickly. So I really needed to take a minute and fix it because I just couldn't sign another client. I had a bunch of potential clients lined up. I told them all I was taking a three-month break and that I would speak to them in the fall, if they were still available and around, great. But I wasn't going to sign them and then have them fire me too, right? I just knew where we were headed. So I took a moment. I hired all the experts. Uh, mindset coach, I really wanted to understand why did these three people fire me, right? I wanted to get inside their head. That's why I'm so obsessed with that five-star experience now. Um, lawyer, I wanted to make my design agreement rock freaking solid for the last time. I didn't want any more little edits and wiggles and tweaks. I wanted it to be clear and concise. And I hired a business consultant because I really wanted to get what I did for Fortune 500 companies. I needed someone else to do that for me. I needed someone else to stand outside of my company and see it because it, I was in it and I couldn't see it anymore. It was too close. You guys ever feel like that? Like you just need someone else to help you see what you need to see. So then I, all three of those experts were from outside of our industry as well. I really wanted to make sure that we weren't doing the status quo, that we weren't just doing it how it's always been done, that we were getting into a completely new method to run a design firm. I wanted a white sheet of paper. And what would this look like if I just said fresh and clear, I want to move pricing to the times when they're happy. I want to be concise and clear. I want timelines that are appropriate. I don't want to work around the clock. I want processes and systems and clarity, right? And my business totally transformed to joyful, profitable, and thriving, to a portfolio full of completed projects, right? Not getting fired and giving myself the appropriate budget and timeline allowed me to actually completely design rooms top to bottom. Like I'm talking art, throws, pillows, accessories, all of it. We're not getting to the end and they're in decision fatigue and budget fatigue because they're, it's all front loaded, right? 
So I'm able, if I set it up right, I'm going to co design complete spaces, not bits and pieces and one layer at a time. Um, to referrals, filling the pipeline, having going from standing on that front porch and being like, gosh, I hope they hire me, gosh, I hope they hire me, to standing on that front porch, go, front porch going, I hope they're cool. I hope I like their vibe. I hope I decide I want to take on this project, right? Totally different mindset. Whoa, is it better for negotiating when you're in that mindset of I'm interviewing you just as much as you're interviewing me? And that's the hand selecting projects to the point where you get that referral machine cranking and you get to decide what aesthetic you want to work on next, what neighborhood you want to be in, what size projects you want to work on. And my life transformed. No, I did not become a surfer and I'm about to fall off in this picture, but I did go surfing and that's something. I wasn't doing that for the first five years in business. I was just working my butt off, taking dream vacations, having time with my daughters and feeling confident and successful. How many of you would love to feel confident and successful about the business side? Yeah, we feel confident and successful about the beauty we create, but it's like, how are we running it? So once I got this all set up and working and I really got a few projects through it, I was talking to my design buddies at the conferences like we do. And they were like, huh, can I like snag a copy of that contract? Like I'd pay you for it. You know, I know you spent a ton of money with that lawyer. And I was like, yes, but then do you have the flat fee calculator? Because it involves a flat fee. And then do you have the processes in place so that you actually can get the job done in an appropriate amount of time? right? Efficiency processes and therefore have the flat fee be profitable. Like it, it really all goes together. It's not little separate bits and pieces. So that's why I pulled over and created the standard then. So before we dive into Q&A, because I really want to hear about what's going on with your businesses as well, I'd like to take just a few minutes and tell you what's inside the standard. Is that okay with you guys? All right. I promise no other really random faux pas. <laughs> well, I can't promise, can I? All right. So the, um, Again, we started an entirely different method for, um, for running a design firm. And I read these through to you earlier. They're the same ones. We covered a few today, but there's more. Um, the standard will allow you to provide clarity with the ultimate design agreement. So again, I pulled over. What's that? Train. All right. Worked with an incredible lawyer. Have a wonderful design agreement. I've been pounding on it for 10 years, and hundreds and hundreds of other designers have too, and they adore it. Um, you'll be able to price your services for profit in minutes before you design anything with our pricing calculator. And again, the finance degree, the spreadsheets, the love of the numbers, um, this is where it really shines. The ability to price a project, you meet the client, two days later, you're proposing a flat fee and you are 100% rock solid confident that it will leave you profitable and with the amount of time and budget you need to create incredible design. You'll be able to scale and delegate when you take each project through one proven process. This is a screenshot of a few of our processes, and you can see the columns and the tasks. I mean, we all know how detailed this um, world of design is, right? We need to know a little bit of a lot of things, and we need to pull it all together all the time. This is really about whether you're a solo or a big team, having processes so that you can confidently understand where you are with each project and set it down and go live your life and come back and pick it back up again, huge. And if you're thinking about scaling a team, this is the only way. Also, we have designers who use these documented processes if they're considering selling their business one day because you don't have a business if it's all in your head, right? This is what makes your business so much more valuable is having documented, refined processes. Everything we do inside the standard is swipeable, which means it's soft and you edit it and you make it your own. You'll be able to provide an excellent client experience with the refined processes, client-centric mindset, and pricing that clients just adore. So I went through all of this so you don't have to. I spent well over $100,000 with all those experts, the books, the consultants, the conferences, all the things that I did to fix my business. I have the proven process and worked out the kinks along with the hundreds of designers that are with me, right? Um, not only do I save time and money that I spend to develop it, but you save the years of trial and error of figuring this stuff out on your own. So are you a figure it all out on your own or uh, use the catapult to move your business forward? Um, oh, and I wanted to let you guys know, we officially closed enrollment two weeks ago, but we sneaky opened um, while we're at high point. So if you are looking to scooch into the standard, you can do it this week only. And then we're open again in six months. 
All right, guys, I think that's it. We're going to call it. Um, it's been a, such a pleasure and an embarrassing situation. Thank you.